Hello, welcome to this video. This is lesson 4-2, Essentials of Calculus. And in this video, we are going to talk about the first derivative test. And the first derivative test um, is going to help us identify where is a function increasing and decreasing and what are the relative extrema. All right, so um, looking at a, a couple of things here, here's our procedure for using the, the first derivative test and how you determine if a function is increasing or decreasing. Um, the first thing that we're going to have to do is look at our function and identify are there any domain restrictions, any values that, that I can't plug in. Okay, um, if there are domain restrictions, those values are removed from our critical values. We can't use them. What do we have to do next? Well, we have to find our critical values. How do you find your critical values? Take the derivative. You set it equal to zero and you find out, okay, where is uh, my, my uh, derivative equal to zero? And then also too, if you have any values that are undefined um, in your derivative, those are also critical numbers. Now, once you have the critical numbers, you're gonna place them out on a number line. That's step three, okay? And then after that, we're gonna test. I'm gonna take numbers to the left, to the right, Okay, and we're gonna plug them in. Do I get a positive uh, slope? Do I get a negative slope? Okay, and then that will help us determine is our function increasing or is it decreasing? Um, and then lastly, what they want us to do is list is your function increasing or decreasing and um, help identify your relative min and max values. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and look at example one. And I think I'm gonna split this lesson into, into two videos. So um, this first video will just focus on, on problem number one and the second video will focus on um, examples two and three. Okay, so they say find the intervals on which these functions are increasing and decreasing and find all local extrema. First derivative test. Okay, so what we want to do, step one, what is the domain? So looking at, at this function, this is a polynomial, okay, and um, it's a, a cubic root and there's, there's no values that we have to, to worry about, okay? My domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? So what we'll do is step two, all right, step one. Step two, we'll take the derivative. What is f prime of x? Well, that's two thirds x squared minus nine to the power of negative one third times the derivative of the inside, okay? And that is two x. So now I'm gonna simplify this. I'll multiply the twos to give us four x over uh, in the denominator, we have a three along with our um, x squared minus nine to the power of negative one third, right? That's the cubic root of x minus nine. Okay, couple things that we have to do. We have to determine our, our critical values now. So this is step three. Step three, critical numbers. Okay, now how do we determine critical numbers? Well, I gotta see, okay, where is f prime of x equal to zero? So I take my function, 4x over three times the cubic root of x squared minus nine, and I wanna solve, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'll multiply both sides by the denominator, three times the cubic root of x squared minus nine. Do the same thing over here, multiply by three times the cubic root of x squared minus nine. And uh, I know it's kind of little, but it's almost trivial, right? Um, that just disappears and we get zero is equal to four x, okay? And then solving, we get x is equal to zero. So I have a critical number there at, at zero. All right, um, next thing that we also wanna do for, for critical numbers is I want to know, and I'll write this in green, where is f prime of x undefined? Okay, and note that um, undefined values, right, that's gonna be when your denominator is equal to zero. So what makes our, our denominator go to zero? Well, sorry, I forgot a square up here. Um, that's gonna be when our, our radical value goes to zero, okay? And what, what values will produce that? Well, that is at positive and negative three, right? If I plug those in, I get zero, okay? And the, the way to determine that um, algebraically, if you're curious, would be just to take that, that radicand, right? Or almost you could take even the whole, the whole thing, okay? Minus nine, set it equal to zero, and you could solve, right? Solve for x, okay? Um, so those values are our critical numbers, okay? So what do we do now? 
Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm gonna do it out here. So maybe if, if you're running out of space, um, like I am, maybe you wanna take these notes on a separate piece of paper, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. So I have a number line, okay? And I'm gonna place my critical numbers. I have negative three, I have zero, and I have positive three. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna test these intervals, okay? So I'm gonna pick numbers, plug them in, and then we'll, we'll see what those values are. So I'm gonna pick, let's say negative four. Okay, so I take negative four, I plug it in. In the numerator, I get a negative value. In the denominator, negative four squared 16, 16 minus nine um, gives us seven. Okay, that's a positive value. So negative over a positive gives us a negative. Okay, and, and again, I don't have to know um, if those values are positive or if they're negative. Okay, um, or sorry, I don't have to know specific what they are, just if they're positive or negative. Next, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll plug in negative one. Now when I plug in negative one, my numerator is negative. And when I plug in negative one into the denominator, we get uh, positive one minus nine, that's negative eight. Okay, and the cubic root of negative eight is negative two. So I get a negative over negative, which is a positive. All right, next, I'm gonna go ahead and check uh, in between zero and three, I'll plug in one. Now when I plug in one, in the numerator I get a positive value. In the denominator I get one minus nine, which is negative eight. Cubic root of negative eight is negative two. Negative two times three is negative six. Positive or negative is a negative. Okay, all right. And then last but not least, I'll go ahead and uh, check four. And when I plug in four, we get a positive on top, right? That's 16 divided by uh, four squared is 16, 16 minus nine, seven. Root seven is positive, and we get a positive value, positive over positive. Okay, so what this means is it means that my function's decreasing from negative infinity to three, and then at three, it starts to increase. At zero, it decreases all the way to three, and then from three, it is increasing. Now, this is definitely not what the function looks like, but the concept of increasing, decreasing still applies. And um, I wanna point out too, when you go from decreasing to increasing, what is that? It's a min, good job. When you go from increasing to decreasing, what is that? It's a max, good job. And then when you go again, right, this is a min, okay. So um, we have those values, okay? And now what we can do is we can answer the questions, right? Is we can say, okay, the function is increasing on negative three to zero union three to infinity, and it is decreasing on negative infinity to negative three, union zero to three. All right, that's part of it. They also want the uh, extrema, okay? So um, what we can tell them is we can tell them we have a max at f of zero, okay? And I can, I can plug in zero, and when we plug in zero into our function, um, we get, that's what, negative nine to the power of two thirds, okay? So there's a, a relative max. Um, oh, and they want them as points, lo siento. Okay, I'm gonna make sure. So a max at zero comma negative nine to the power of two thirds, okay? And then last but not least, a min. Now we have mins at uh, negative three and positive three, you know, looking at them here, okay? And when I plug in negative three and positive three, um, our output is zero, right? Negative three squared, nine, nine take away nine, zero, zero to a power, zero. Okay, so min at plus and minus three comma zero. All right, there you have it. Okay, so in this video, um, we wanted to find where is our function increasing and decreasing. How do you identify that? Look at the slope. Is it going up? Is it going down? Okay, so how do you look at slope? 
take the derivative. We took the derivative, we identified the critical numbers, okay, that's where our function equals zero, or where the function's undefined. We did a sign analysis test to determine if it's positive or negative, and from there we had determined where it's increasing, decreasing, and the local mins and max. Check out the next video, I'm going to cover the next two topics. Peace, see ya.